Hey doing legends, it is a trades video time for the fantasy teams there and also my tipping for the week. So let's kick it off with the tipping side of things. I'm actually having a cracker season. There's 371st out of almost 18,000 Cowboys fans there. Sixth in the private group, ninth in the open comp there and first in my family tipping comp. And that does come off the back of a nice Maroons tip there. And I basically tip them every time because most of the time they win, but also because, uh, yeah, the old... If Blues win, I'm, I'm happy. If if I get my tip, then then that's helpful, obviously, there as well, rather than you know going all in on the on the Blues uh, with the tip as well. 6,379th overall in the rankings. Very, very happy with that situation. And I was waiting to see some backups and different things, but with Lomax and Ben Hunt returning, Jaden Sewer off the bench, I do think Dragons can win this game against the Tigers. There's still one more week without Aiden Caesar. And they've got, obviously, Bateman out. Probably, yeah, there's a lot going on. So Dragons will get my tip in that first game of the round. Titans up against the Bunnies. I do actually think that the Bunnies have a, a high chance of winning this game. And I'm going to go against the grain here, against the Titans tip and 69% of people and go for the Bunnies with Cody Walker in that halves position with Jack White and Latrell Mitchell back. They've got some good things happening outside of, you know, Cam Murray being out. And I'm going to go with them this week. I think they've been playing, you know, solid enough footy. And Titans have been great as well. But I'm going to go with the Bunnies in this one in a tie contest. Cowboys up against the Warriors. Yes, Johnson's still out. But they've been playing good footy the last few. And we just got confirmation that Robson and Murray Talangi are going to be out. Unsure on the other four Origin players. They're going to be, there's going to be a decision made on them closer to the game. They played great last week. But Roosters were very, very poor. And if the Warriors can come out and do what they've done the last few weeks. They will win this matchup against the Cowboys. Can the Cowboys back up their defensive effort and their poise to, to get a good win here against the Warriors? I definitely think they can. And the stats say, you know, most people are selecting them, 66% are. So I'm going to go with Warriors against the grain again and select a two-point margin there. For the Broncos, I think they will get the win up against the Sharkies. Most of their guys will back up. The Sharkies have been flailing a little bit in the last few weeks and without Walsh it's going to be a little bit painful but there was a chance he was, wasn't was going to play anyway uh, Tristan Saylor is actually going to return four weeks after a Sindismos century which is absolutely incredible and the rest of their guys should should likely back up given it's Saturday night for four days almost exactly after the Origin matchup so Broncos at home I'll be tipping them Storm at home as well looks like there's a, a good chance Brian uh, Tui Brian, I was going to say Brian to it. It's not right, is it? Anyway, uh, came out and said that uh, Fletcher Sharp might be coming in. So, yeah, maybe that's a little breath of fresh air. But they lost by 30 last week against the Doggies there. And uh, they were playing really well before that, winning four on the trot. But for a Storm team, I think they're going to be coming into this really, really strong after, after their bye last week. And they're going to do good things. So Storm at home, hard to tip against. Panthers up against the Eagles, 87% of tipped Panthers, and I think that's a good play there. The way that they're going after a back after a loss, I do think they can come out and win this one. I do expect a DCE to back up, which would be cool, but Panthers at home, hard to tip against as well. And I'm actually going to go for Eels at the moment against the Dogs. If they played like they did last week, I think that they'll be able to beat the Doggies. They, they've been up for a good while now, the Doggies, and both basically yeah, almost a home game for them in Sydney. It's not going to be too much of a different. I don't think the home ground advantage. And yeah, I think just the Eels with a bit of form under their belt. They played really good last week. If they play that again, they'll win. So that's where I'm going with them at the moment. If we do see people, you know, not backing up and things like that, I may look to change some tips. But at this stage, the two risky ones are the Bunnies and the Warriors pick. But I'm excited to see how they play out. All right, we move to my trades for the week. And this is currently if everything goes wrong. This is how I'll be rolling out. And this also has Armstrong currently traded out of the side. So let's look at this now. It's four trades. If Cotter plays in this scenario, Armstrong doesn't play. I've got 17 players, which is cool. Unsure about Cotter at the moment, but you know, a decision's gonna be made on him in the next sort of you know 24 to 36 hours before their game. I'll actually be less than at 24 hours or something, which is cool. And yeah, we'll find out obviously, but I do think Cotter, I think for, for me, if you watched yesterday's video, I think he's going to be a hold for next week so I can have another mid and don't have to trade one in next week is going to be my general thoughts at this stage. So if Armstrong is out, this is how it'll play out. Lusick 
is going to go to Samuel Lafainu, and that will happen today. Uh, for tonight's game, I'm going to do that one first. Lustig to Finu, lock that one in, I'm pretty sure. Just gives me a fair bit of cash to play with next week. And in this scenario, it's 252k. And that leaves me some cash there to go from Hughes to whoever I need to go to next week with him being on the buy and getting me a really solid either 17th man or 18th man there. So that's my general thoughts. Rather than spending up the cash with Finu and going up to Twali or Stefano Utokamanu to get another mid on the park, I'm going to go a little bit cheaper and leave some cash in the bank for that huge trade. So I just wanted to show you guys what it might look like, a good chance of it. And if Armstrong plays and Cotter plays, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be leaving Garrick for one more week. I think is how it's going to play out, to be honest with you. I'm going to go for Hughes this week, leave Garrick against Penrith, and then probably grab him next week for what would be either Hughes or Armstrong next week, depending how things play out. Um, to get Garrick using that extra cash in the bank. That's my general thoughts at this point because I would still have 400 and something K if I don't do the Armstrong trade. Um, I'd be able to go Armstrong to Garrick or Hughes to Garrick next week, whatever. Obviously, if Armstrong doesn't get dropped at all, plays the next few weeks, we'll keep hold of him and Hughes will go to Garrick next week. So it would be three trades to make up the 17 there as well. Yeah, so that's my general thoughts. Uh, last week to Finu first. Then Fafita's going to be next. So it's probably going to be either Hines or Crichton there to, to Fifi. Not really going to matter too much. And then given he plays the second game, which is the first one tomorrow, and then it will be either like most likely Crichton to Hughes. And that's, again, if Armstrong and Cotter play. I think I'm going to hold Cotter no matter what and trade out these guys anyway. And I don't really want to trade out like a Hines or a Crichton given I think they're going to score really well next week. But I need to look at the whole buy period and what this is going to do for saving trades across the period too. Because uh, if you've got Crichton, you've got Heinz there who are origin guys, they're missing a lot more games than these other guys I'm trading in for. Like Hughes misses one game, one more game in the origin period. Same with Garrick. Finder misses zero and Fafita misses one in round 17, him and Garrick. And that's if those guys, um, you yeah, know, that's if Fafita doesn't make origin, obviously. So when you're trading out, that's what I say, one, two, three games that those four players miss compared to Lussick missing all of them, but let's count him out anyway. Hines is going to miss at minimum three games, maybe four. So that already covers, those four trade-ins already cover that. Yes, it's four trade-ins, but uh, Armstrong's going to miss, if he misses this week, it'll be 14, 16, makes two. And then Crichton's going to miss 14, 16, and 19, and maybe doesn't back up from origin in some others. So it's like seven to 14 or 15 with Lussick trading in guys that were only going to miss three games in total between the four players, which is really, really cool. And is something that I think is going to help me hold trades later on. And, and that nine this week, hopefully it's just one trade next week could potentially hold, but I do think likely it's worth selling Hughes next week. And then Cotter maybe in round 16 from that point. And and or Atkinson, like he could be a guy that if he loses his spot, he's obviously going to go as well before someone like Cotter. Um, and then Fuller potentially in round 17. So it's kind of like one a week, maybe two there with an Atkinson over the next few and leaving me sort of four or five for round 18, 19, which I think will be enough. If I can use sort of two or three over that couple of weeks and then leaves me with two or three in the bank, before we get the eight remaining in round 20 for that last eight rounds. If I've got 10 for the last eight rounds, I think that's going to be good enough. And hopefully over this period, I can, it means I can score really well in all the big buy rounds, 13, 16, 19, and also the minor buy rounds in 14, 17, and 20. So yeah, that's my general thoughts with the trades. And obviously having a look at the team now, that will have Fafita as captain. I'm going to go, I don't really want to vice captain Hughes in case he happens to miss this game or something happens. So. I'm going to go probably our next safest to be fair is is going to be like Galvin. He's been scoring super well in recent history and, and obviously plays that first game as well. I could go for a Knights player and a Braley or Kypis Paul or something like that. I could go a Karaz, but it's in the last game. Could go Drinkwater. To be fair, that wouldn't be the worst either. So yeah, I think that's what we're looking at heading into this week. Grant, you know, could not back up. So I do think that Galvin's just going to be the safest vice captaincy who can do really well also. So Braley, Samuel Lafino, Hughes, and King. Nothing special in the mids, but it's going to you know do for this week. Braley and Grant is my hookers. 
Fafita, Kaipis, Paul, Bloor, and also Picura this week. Halves is going to be Galvin and Hughes, which I think is pretty solid. Some people might have Brown. Some people might have Moses. Really solid as well. Iro and Karaz in the centers. I think Karaz will be better this week with Crichton back. Atkinson, Drinkwater, and Garrick down below. Looks pretty good. And then, uh, yeah, hopefully Cotter. And then guys I'm holding, uh, Fuller, Aitken, Weeks, and Plath, who I'm super excited about. But we just got in interesting news about TPJ returning and uh, signing a contract with the Dolphins. I'm not sure if that affects Plath too much. I don't think it does. It may affect guys like Josh Kerr. Coming off the bench, I'd imagine it'd be like a bench type of role for TPJ, given he hasn't uh, yo, hasn't been within a role club all year. So that's my general thoughts around my side this week, the trades I'll be using. It is four this week, but it's just an absolute mess. So I do think if you can get 17 on the park this week, if Cotter plays, right, or Armstrong and, and whatever that works, then awesome. I think a 17 on the park, I'll make some good ranks, especially. And that's, you know, expecting at least 50, 60, 70% to grab for feeder this week. And just remember, guys, I will I will uh, reverse all these trades. I'll roll back my team here and I'll make one at a time, right? So I'm going to get for feed in straight away. So let's just say I go, uh, what am I going to do? Crichton to Fafita, let's just say. Make that one easy. And Lussig to Finu. They're going to be the two trades I lock in straight away. I'm going to make sure that Atkinson is down at wing fullback because that's where I'm going to need him this week. Pretty sure I'm locking in Hughes. So Hughes can, uh, like Plath can be in that half position all weeks. And then I'll, uh, I'll make that next trade of Hines to Hughes when the time is right. Obviously, there the Sharkies play, yeah, halfway through all the games. They're out, they're the game four of the week, so I can wait a little bit on that decision, and then go Hines to Hughes, pop him in the starting side or on the bench. It's not going to matter. And then that final trade can go Armstrong to if he if we find out he's out, Armstrong to Garrick. So I'm just going to make sure that Armstrong's sitting in that position. If he's out, I'm just going to go Armstrong to Garrick down there. And if he plays, then I'm just going to leave it and not make that trade this week and then make it next week, I think is how I'm going to play this one. Most likely, because I don't really want to trade Fuller. I think I need him for round 16 or want him for round 16, to be honest with you, at this point, given I, I can likely cover him next week if I'm trading out Hughes. So yeah, that's just a few thoughts on my side now, and we will head over to the head-to-head -head side now. Okay, with the head-to-head -head side, we have currently made one trade, but I think the second one will come along. And right now, with the situation that I'm at here, if Armstrong plays and Cotter plays, I would have 17 without making this extra trade. But right now, I've just gone strange to Brennan Hands. And this is a team right here that I don't have hooker cover. So it's a terrific opportunity to get Brendan Hands there. And he's obviously an option in in my uh, in my overall team as well, but just doesn't seem to fit the, the plans that I want to go forward with so i think i'm going to leave it i'm going to lock it in here in the head to head side which leaves me 191k to upgrade and i do think that i'm going to be making the Crichton to fafita trade and i just i do need to be getting some wins in this head to head team so that's the general thought as i what as to what i'm going to do so if i was to do that fafita would then come in for britain and nicara i would be captaining fafita in that standpoint and vice captaining Tohu Harris there, given I think he's the second best scorer that I've got. And then Nikara would move up into emergency five. How we want to play that there for sure. So Garrick, Armstrong, and Drinkwater. If Armstrong doesn't play, I have... Uh, do not have cover, do I? Well, that's beautiful. That's just beautiful. That's what I was thinking that before, actually. I forgot about that. Something I need to work out uh, as to what I'd be doing. So maybe Luttrell instead of Fafita is the play to get 17 on the park this week. That could be how it works out. I might have to, I can't even wait for that, can I? Yeah, that's tough. That's tough. It could be like I have 18 playing, like if Cotter, I don't know, if Cotter plays, Cotter plays, it's 18. Armstrong doesn't, yeah. It might end up being just a 16 situation because I don't want to make that trade just for the sake of it to get Latrell because who would I trade out? That's the big question. Like I'm not going to be trading out Plath, Manu or Weeks. Cotter, I don't think it's worth trading out given I've got Hughes and King in the mids. Yes, I do have Plath, but that is all. Like I'd still be one short next week if I was to get rid of Cotter. Same situation as, as my overall team. So, hmm, very interesting. I might have to make that decision later on in the week. That for sure. 
or just play with 16. Like it could be that scenario where you just get Fafita because the trail like it like him, but obviously want Fafita as well. And 127k in the bank can't really go anyone up to a gun. So it might just be a wish art. Could be the play, I think, at that point. Armstrong to Wishart, because they play in the same game, don't they? Yeah, maybe Armstrong to Wishart could play out in this head-to-head -head side, and that would be another trade used, make it three, but it may be needed. So we'll have a little watch and see if he's out or not, and then make that final decision. I don't want to, but it might be the way to do it. Got Brown in this side, Torval Harris, Reed Marnie, probably the main differences there with Jack Cole. Brandon Hands playing, we call Nikara. Yeah, we can uh, do a bit of a loopy as well in that first first game. Tigers players, no. What else we got? Next game up on that one will be... What have we got? Titans, bunnies. No bunnies at the moment. Cowboys, warriors. When's my first loop going to come? <laughs> it's in that Sharkies game. It will be written Nicker actually. Yeah, so I'd set up correctly there for that one. But uh, yeah, what are you guys doing in your, are you head to head? Are you overall, what are you deciding to do this week? Let me know in the comments what you're going for. And uh, yeah, we'll get into, hopefully get into that first game tonight, 8 p.m. Nice late one, 10 p.m. for New Zealand and Fijians. Happy days, obviously there. What an amazing game that's going to be to watch the Dargans up against the Tigers at 10 p.m. when it's uh, when it's Ben time. So there you go, guys. That's the trades for the week. A lot can change. I will roll back my side and uh, see how that one plays out. But yeah, there you go. We'll leave it at that one there and we'll see you in that next review video.